Hi! This presentation is called Making Your Case. <clears throat> it's going to be broken down into four parts for you. We'll be um, discussing the importance of advocacy and voting, um, and then um, what it looks like to be an advocate, uh, then meaningful ways of sharing your story, and ultimately how to conduct yourself when you're visiting with legislators. Um, so welcome. Real quick, I just want to share um, a little bit more on FND. We are a 501c3 a nonprofit organization um, helping families across the state of Florida understand special education, um, providing resources and supports to individuals with uh, disabilities, um, their families, and professionals who serve them. Uh, my name is Kathy Powell, and I am the program director for Podpin, the Parents of the Panhandle Information Network, a program of Family Network on Disabilities, and we are your North Florida PTI, or Parent Training and Information, uh, funded in part by the U.S. Department of Education and covering 37 counties from Escambia to Volusia. Quick disclaimer, uh, we are not lawyers or doctors, so any information that is given is not legal advice, and we do not interpret the law or provide medical advice to any families. So, importance of advocacy. Uh, making your case, in my opinion, is the simplest way to begin advocating on a much larger scale. But don't be overwhelmed. Um, we can even break this down, this importance of advocacy down, um, even further. And we're um, going to talk about democracy and registering to vote and voter accessibility, how you can make a difference and um, how we can get our feet wet with um, a sample campaign. So first and foremost, vote. Voting is one of the most effective ways to get our policymakers' attention. Whoever you vote for, just register to vote and vote. This is your most basic right as a citizen and an advocate. And, um, you know, if we don't speak up and communicate with our legislators, we won't get what we need out of the policymaking process. And if you aren't sure how to register, um, where to go, who can register, or different ways to vote, and what to bring, I'm going to be including some links in the, in the chat section, in the comment section. Um, so you can have that information. Accessibility for voting for persons with disabilities. Uh, Florida law allows you as a registered voter to have assistance marking your choices on your ballot if you need assistance um, because of blindness, a disability, or inability to read or write. Uh, and you may request assistance from election officials or select someone to assist you. Um, a little bit more on that. Um, so your right to cast a vote, you can make your own choices and vote by yourself. Um, Florida law requires that voting systems, the actual voting machines and polling places be accessible for persons with disabilities. Um, and that means you have a right to cast a secret ballot independently. And the state is um, required to provide those voting machines that permit this. Um, if you need assistance with voting, um, to get help from a person of, of your choice or an elected official um, due, if you need the assistance due to a disability. Um, you can receive personal help at the polls um, during early voting or on election day. Um, you do not have to reveal the nature or extent of your disability. Um, and then you can choose anyone you want. There are some um, stipulations. Uh, you can't have your employer or an agency of your employer, or an officer or agency of your union helping you. But other than that, anyone you want. Um, and then it, uh, Florida law requires that uh, polling places be accessible to persons with disabilities. Um, and there are grants um, that uh, these polling areas can access from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services a voting program to make polling places accessible to the disability community. Even if you have a guardian, unless you um, your right to vote has been specifically removed by a court, you are still eligible to vote. Uh, you can also vote by mail uh, from the comfort of your home. I know a lot of us are looking to do that this, uh, you know, for COVID. In addition, you can have um, anyone other than your employer agent or of employer or an officer agent of your union mark that the choice is for you or have that person assist. Um, 
early voting. This is uh, also an attractive option for many people, including persons with disabilities. It's often available for many days prior to the official election date. So check your county supervisor of elections to find out where and when it's available. Um, this provides more flexibility and less stress um, since the time required to vote is often greatly reduced. There's often little or no waiting. Elections and voting are often regarded as the heart of the political process. And as long as people are given the chance to vote and to choose their representatives and their stance on social uh, and political issues, then democracy is working. That is the power of decision. Um, remember, these folks we're talking about um, work, work for you. It's not enough that they were elected. It's what they promised happen, would happen. Um, that having been said, you need to know the process and how it works so you can be heard. It's important whether you're um, advocating for yourself or someone else that you are not afraid to ask for exactly what you want. Advocacy is especially important now because of the many legislative changes made to social assist, uh, assistance programs and mental health services and other areas that impact the lives of people with disabilities. You don't need special training to be an advocate. Anyone can do it. Your voice makes a difference. Now this presentation, Making Your Case, is based on a Making Your Case Partners of Partners in Policymaking. Um, it's based on a national model developed by the Minnesota Governor's Council on Developmental Disabilities more than 25 years ago, and it's offered in almost every state and in many foreign countries. If you're interested in learning more and really building your advocacy skills, you will enjoy this more intense course. Um, access it, you can access it on uh, FDDC's website. It stands for Florida Developmental Disability Council. Uh, it goes deeper into the legislative process and the whole essential elements of good advocacy and identifying and researching issues and then advocating for system change. Your role in a democratic process of government does not end at the polls. By sharing your opinion and ideas um, with your representatives and senators in Tallahassee, you help them decide what to do about the issues before the legislature takes action on it. Think about it. The legislator wins an election. He or she leaves your home state and goes to Washington, D.C. And then suddenly they find themselves voting on a range of issues. Education, taxation, trade, defense, and housing. Um, all the while hearing absolutely nothing from their constituents who are entrusting them to represent them. They're going to quick, quickly realize um, they can't cover everything by themselves. And the only way to stay on top of the things that they're important to their constituents is for them to listen to their constituents. Um, so it's important that you uh, have your voice heard. Um, you know, making a phone call, sharing your story of um, your child and how a particular uh, bill might affect them. Um, you know, they love to share stories um, when they're standing up in front of their peers, in front of the legislation. They can stand up before the other legislators and argue why they are for and against the bill, but if they have your story in their hand, you know, a simple letter to the, rep to the representative explaining the needs of your child and how this bill would impact them or their education may very likely influence their decision. And if they're going to speak publicly on the bill, then you're helping them by allowing them to share your story. Okay? Chances are that um, these people smiling and taking the selfie, um, they're, cel they're celebrating something big. Um, and that, that celebrating came about as a result of a lot of hard work by a well-organized group engaged in what's called le legislative advocacy. Um, Helping members of Congress know what you want. Uh, if lawmakers hear from five to ten people about one issue or something they are cha to change in law or a new law, that's a lot. Um, on most issues, legislation, um, they hear nothing from everyday people like you and me. Since legislators know that most of their constituents won't take the time to write, or call, they actually multiply your communication by a factor appropriate to size of their constituency, generally at least 10. So your note or call is considered to be the opinion of as many as 10 constituents. Um, 
And there are a lot of ways to increase your effectiveness by simply increasing the number of people you engage in your legislative advocacy efforts. So here are some things that you can do. You can attend, um, start attending candidate forums and legislative workshops in your community. You can hold or attend town meetings and rallies or marches, all effective ways to bring people together and get the word out about an issue. Ask your friends, ask 10 friends or family members or office staff to make a call or write a letter um, and you can increase your impact tenfold. Um, you can mine your holiday card list for contacts for important issues. Now I mentioned the word um, legislative advocacy in the last slides and in its simplest term legislative advocacy is working with individual lawmakers and lawmaking bodies to gain support for your cause or um, initiative for the needs of a specific population, uh, for an organization or a group of organizations, or for specific service. And it includes educating legislators, supporters, and the public about the issue. Now, I told you I was going to share a sample um, campaign. Um, the end to the R word in Florida. This was an advocacy campaign. Um, boil down, an advocacy campaign is a meth methodical um, and strategic approach to reaching a spe specific time-sensitive goal. Um, so here is a great example of advocacy, and this was big a big win in Florida. Um, it became when it became the 40th state to unanimously pass a law replacing the word um, retarded with intellectual disabilities in its state laws. People with disabilities just want to be treated as equals and given the same decisions. Um, choices, rights, and responsibilities, and a chance to speak up to empower themselves. Um, Self-advocates had a goal and went about a strategic approach in raising awareness through a campaign, and that campaign was called the R Word, Spread the Word to End the Word. And they did so much to support the elimination of the derogatory use of the R Word, and in collaboration with so many disability agencies. I'm going to and show just a few of the things they did. Um, you know, they put up dedicated website. They um, asked for online pledges. They created video messaging to teach how to take the pledge. Um, they shared key messaging and talking points for stakeholders um, for them to use when making phone calls to legislators. <clears throat> um, they asked for stories to take to the Capitol. Um, they created fact sheets or one pagers. They created a whole social media plan. Um, banners to use um, on social media uh, for plan, they had plan R word events and large banners for people to sign at events. Um, they created toolkits, template letters. Not to mention the amount of work that went into creating graphics for like, t-shirts and printable banners and buttons and business cards. Um, but there's so much people with disabilities are fighting for. Um, find your your, your cause and, and learn to advocate and find your voice. Um, just some ideas of, of things to get behind that come to mind is um, like the getting rid of the use of adversives to um, support efforts to eliminate the use of, um, you know, restraint and seclusion um, for severe punishment in schools and nursing homes. Also, uh, closing institutions, both private and public. Um, you know, people, regardless of the severity of the disability, should live in the community with supports that they need. Um, also, maybe, uh, you know, removing, eliminating sub-minimum wage for employment. There's um, lots of persons with disabilities, 30, 40, and 50-year-olds, that are just sitting in sheltered workshops. Um, you know, some people earn 45 cents an hour or less in a sheltered workshop. So that is part one. Um, please stay tuned for part two of Making Your Case, where we're going to be discussing more on being an advocate. Thank you so much for listening.